If you're struggling to find a home, you are not alone. Thanks to historically low interest rates, home prices have risen. And with the sudden increase in mortgage rates, this has only exacerbated the ongoing housing affordability crisis, leaving many would-be home buyers struggling to find suitable options and feeling priced out of the market. Hello everyone, I'm Jen, your Delaware Realtor. I know this is not something you're going to want to hear, but it's something that's really important and you need to hear it. We have been talking about a housing affordability crisis on this channel for three years. And before I was in the industry, if you would have said housing affordability crisis to me, I would have assumed that it had to do with home prices. And it does have to do with home prices, but that is not the whole picture. When we talk about housing affordability, we are not just talking about home prices specifically, but rather the monthly mortgage payment in relation to your monthly income. The home price factors into your monthly mortgage payment, but so does the interest rate, your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance. And if we really want to get specific, if you don't put 20% down, PMI is also added into your monthly payment. When we talk about affordability, we take that monthly mortgage payment in relationship to your monthly income. The general rule of thumb used by many financial experts and your mortgage lender during your pre-approval process is the 2836 rule. The 2836 rule states that no more than 28% of your monthly income should be used towards your housing payment and no more than 36% of your total monthly income should be used toward your total debt repayment, including your housing payment. So that 28% is included in the 36%. Okay, so now that we know what affordability means, to track affordability, we use the Housing Affordability Index. The Affordability Index compares the median home price compared to the median family income. To figure this out, you would take the median home price, divide that by the median family income, and times it by 100. A score of 100 means that the average family can afford the average home. A score above 100 means that the average family can afford more than the average home. And a score of below 100 means that the average family cannot afford the average home. The index currently is at a 95.8 and has been trending downward, which means that the average family cannot afford the average home. Why is this? For multiple reasons. Rising home prices, stagnant income growth, and lack of affordable housing inventory. According to the National Association of Realtors, the median home price for existing homes hit an all-time high in 2021, leaving many would-be home buyers struggling to find affordable options. One of the main drivers of this affordability crisis is the widening gap between home price appreciation and income growth. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median hourly wage in the U.S. has only increased 0.5% per year after adjusting for inflation over the past four decades, while the median home price for existing homes has risen by 4% in that same amount of time. This trend has only became worse with the severe shortage of housing inventory. Despite there being an insane amount of demand for affordable housing, home builders have been very slow to respond. With the 2008 crisis still fresh in their minds, they don't wanna be stuck with a large amount of inventory if they don't have contracts for them. So they're only building what they have sold. And instead, they're actually focusing on the higher end market where they can make their profits on a smaller amount of builds. Basically, they don't wanna be stuck holding the bag in an event of an economic downturn. I don't blame these builders. A lot of the builders, especially in Sussex County of Delaware, are mom and pop builders, which means if they get stuck holding all of this inventory and homes that they can't sell, they're not gonna be able to put food on their table or even pay their employees. This shortage of homes is going to continue to get worse and worse. Even before 2008, home builders were struggling to keep up with demand. And now that they're not even trying, supply continues to fall and demand continues to rise. Even with unfavorable terms for home buyers right now, there is still a baseline of demand because housing is a necessity. It's one of the few actual necessities, which means that people need a house to live in. 
And yes, population has started to fall, but it's not negative, which means that until population goes to the negative, there's gonna be a need for more and more houses. To top all of this off, all of the factors that we just discussed all exist within an inflationary economic system, which means that as our government continues to print new currency, it's devaluing the dollar on a consistent basis. The Federal Reserve's target for inflation is 2%. But we recently just topped over 9%, which means that we are in high inflation right now. But our system is built upon constant inflation, which means that you should always expect the purchasing power of the dollar to be more today than it is in the future. So the general rule of thumb is that you should always expect homes to become more and more expensive. And yes, there will be buyer's markets in the future, but they're going to be short-lived. So long story short, homes are expensive and they're probably going to continue to be expensive and they're going to get even more expensive. Even when you experience the worst housing market collapse back in 2008, it did not even take 10 years for us to end up right back into an affordability crisis. So what I am seeing many home buyers do right now is they're turning to a government backed mortgage program such as FHA and VA. These programs offer lower down payment requirements and more flexible credit scores. This is helping many lower and middle income families get into homes. This is another unconventional way of buying a home and I'm seeing this actually a lot. So instead of parents downsizing, they are actually selling their family home and they are buying a home with their children so that they can all afford a bigger home to live in together. The question that you really need to ask yourself is, can you live with your parents the rest of your life? I am going to do a deep dive into this and I plan to create more content on creative ways that people are coming up with different success stories on how to combat this housing affordability crisis. I really hope that this video helps. If it did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you are a home buyer in Delaware that is looking to purchase, I would love the opportunity to help you. There's a link down below in the description for my calendar and where we can schedule a buyer consultation one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if you are a seller that is looking to sell your home in Delaware, I would also love the opportunity to help you. There is a link down below in the description for an instant valuation of what your home is worth. Once again, I really hope that this video helped. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you on the next one. Hey, were you thinking about purchasing in Delaware? Check out this video right here. And if you would love to tour Delaware new construction homes with me, check out this playlist right here. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel.